This is what you need to know when installing joist hangers so this doesn't happen to you. Now at this point, you wanna make sure that your joist hangers are sized according to your joist. Now mine are two by 10 joists, so this is the hanger that I need. If you take a look over here, you can see that someone's actually replaced these joists previously with a two by eight hanger. See, it's a little bit smaller. That is actually okay, because this can be used for two by tens, but it's always better to use a bigger hanger. We're gonna need a bigger hanger. Go with a bigger hanger. Now, if you wanna do outdoor deck building or landscaping, you should know what galvanized is. This right here is galvanized steel. That means it was dipped in zinc, which is a protective coating once. The manufacturer looked at this and said, well, that didn't cut it. We gotta do things differently. What did they do? they realized they had to dip their steel twice in zinc to make it last longer. And it does last longer, provided you use the right fasteners and the metals have to be like with like. Now to prevent your joist hanger from looking like this, there is a lesson to be learned about fasteners. They have to be rated. Now a rated fastener is an approved fastener. It means you're allowed to use it and the rules are strict here. You can only use approved nails or screws. Now what you should look for when you buy your fasteners is this. You want to make sure you check the box. Firstly for the size, I'm going with two by tens. You can go with the nails or you can go with screws. And these right here are your nails, your approved fasteners for your joint hangers and you can tell the sizing because it's stamped right there on the head of the nail it says 10 so we're not using these today because it's the wrong size we'll be using nine and then you got your joist hangers like this these are good for your two by tens now when you pick up your joist hanger you have a choice of using a rated screw or a rated nail but head to head what is better what's above me here right now take a look at this this is a deck and what is bearing down on a deck bearing down that's a hint bearing means there's a lot of weight or there's a lot of load so which one is stronger for load capacity when you have a lot of people on your deck i think this will surprise you but the screw comes out as the winner for the best in terms of load capacity when you compare directly this nail to this screw and a lot of people don't know that now you should know that load capacity will vary depending on fasteners and the sizing so this is really just an apples to apples comparison for joist hangers now there are a few terms you should absolutely know when it comes to deck building number one is tensile strength you should absolutely know if you are a diyer specifically tensile strength. Tensile strength is the ability to resist being pulled apart by force. So what they do is they test fasteners like screws and nails in a special machine called a tensile tester. All they do is take fasteners in a laboratory and they pull them really hard in both directions. And under a lot of strain, the nail will break first, while the screw has the greatest tensile strength. That's why we use it so much, and it has to do with the threading and the way it's designed. It resists that pull apart tension, making it an excellent choice when fastening two materials together, and you don't want it to pull apart. That's that pull apart force, right? So when force is applied this way, equal pressure, screws come out the winner, which is really good to know in construction, and that's why we see structural screws so much in deck building and beyond. Now, on the other hand, the advantage of nails is their sheer strength. Sheer is like scissors. Shearing, that action is called shearing. And the sheer strength, the up and down motion, the forces, but we often see it in construction as side to side force, which is why we see a lot of nails in framing. Sheer strength is gonna go to nails. So what you should know, professionals are using nail guns. These are heavy, they're expensive. I don't even use one on the channel because you guys don't need to buy one of these unless you want to. I actually like to use screws instead and that is what I'm using today. Take a look on that box. This is what I'm using, two and a half inch. You see that right there? That's this screw here. That is what we're using for double shear nailing. This one, that's an inch and a half. So that's a big difference. So when do we use inch and a half screws versus two and a half? Well, it really is important that you know this. This is what we call this X, double shear nailing. So your joist sits here. 
your ledger is here and X marks the spot. That right there is two points of connection between your joist and your rim joist. This makes your installation extra strong. That is why it is critical, see that? You need those extra long screws. A lot of people will use an inch and a half and it does, look at this. See that puny nail? It's an inch and a half and it's not gonna go remotely into your ledger or your rim joist. What you need to know when hanging your joist, there's a prong at the top. Keep your eye on that, you're gonna need a hammer. Slide it under your joist. Now, biggest mistake is joist hangers cannot sit like that. There can be absolutely no gap right here. Has got to be as tight as you can get it. So hammer underneath, you wanna get it tight. Okay, super tight. I'm holding with one hand, get your hammer, whack it. Now you're gonna squeeze it. Quickly, grab your hammer, hit the prong. See that, nice, tight. Can you get it tighter? Yes, we can. Same thing, hit the prong, nice and tight. Once you have it there, I always start on the right hand side because I'm right handed. It's a hex head, put it on your driver. Now this is the ledger side. If you have a floating deck, it's a rim joist, but I'm gonna go into my ledger always on this side of the leg. That's called the leg. Everything is body parts in construction, hey? What you need to know here is with joist hangers, every hole needs to have a fastener, whether you're using nails or screws. And I put one in here on the other side. We can continue on with all these holes that need to be filled. Okay, so right here are the 45 or the diagonal screws. You still need your longer screws here. You always need longer screws. These go in at a 45. It's really easy. They make it super simple for you guys. So that's squeezing in nice and tight and the screws do a really good job here. And everything I'm using, I will link in the description for the sizing and what you need. Looking good. What about the other side now? Don't forget the other side. She's a tough boss. <laughs> now, anytime you are building a deck, you have to know the term uplift. That's the wind in severe weather that gets under your deck and it wants to rip your deck off of your house, especially here on the beam. This is the weakest point of this deck. Why? because there is no connector, because a long time ago, they didn't make these. This right here is a hurricane tie, and in severe weather areas, this is a part of your building code. Now you want to check and confirm with your local building code, because this is not required in some areas further to the north where I live, but it is starting to become code in those areas too. So keep that in mind. Take your hurricane tie, you're just gonna slip that under your joist uh, so that it is nice and secure. And I'm just gonna start with the middle screw here. So these are great. This is a really smart way to make this connection. And then I'm gonna go in on the side. So the key here when you are installing one of these, is to use the fasteners that are required in your area on your beam. So this is a multiply beam, meaning there's two two by tens. You can also use this on a solid beam, which is what we use for big heavy duty decks. And screws are just making this very simple in terms of the installation. So I have two screws on this side. And as you guys can see, you wanna fill in all these holes here. I'm gonna slip over to the other side. I do like these. I think this is a great idea. And why I'm using screws here is just really easy. Then it's easier than swinging a hammer. You can also use nails, but this is a lot easier. And that right there is nice and secure. Good connection between your joist and your beam. Now for our beam to joist connection, there's a good tip for you guys to learn. Let's just zoom in here right there. This is very common to drive a nail or screw into your joist to make a beam to joist connection. But do you see it right here? This has actually split. Now there's a lot of channels that are saying, hey, let's just drive screws into our joists 
to secure them from storms. And it sounds like a good idea, but old lumber like this is dry and it's prone to splitting. And actually the manufacturer of the Hurricane Ties, they say, do not install screws into your old joists. Just use those. I guess they want to sell you the product. Probably, yes. But also, as you can see, this joist here is split. So they are they do know what they're talking about. They don't want your joist to split like this. And it is very easy to happen, especially with the dry lumber. Something to keep in mind. And in another video, I'll show you what to do over here with a rotted out post. This is what I do. I fix things, right?